Hello everybody, this is Diloop and welcome to Factorio. We're on point 18 today and with the 1.0 release coming up very shortly by the end of the year, I wanted to create a tutorial series for this game. Uh, the tutorials on YouTube currently are very outdated and haven't been updated in some time, so I figured now was a good time to do it. Uh, we may go back to more beginner concepts, but today we're just going to be starting with circuit networks. This will span a couple of episodes. Uh, today we're just covering the very, very basics, and then next episode we will cover combinators and actually getting into some of the stuff that you can do with the circuit network. Uh, so to start out, the circuit network consists of a couple of items here. Uh, we have red wire, green wire, arithmetic combinators, decider combinators, constant combinators, the power switch, and the programmable speaker. All of these items have different uses, but mainly what it's all used for is controlling your factory with smart logic and using variables to, to do that. Uh, so how to use the circuit network is really simple. You either grab a red or green wire. It doesn't matter which, they're both the same, but they do have different numbers attached to them. So basically they're different circuits. If I take this wire and I click on a power pole, you can drag it to another power pole and if to remove the wire, you click on one connection that's already made and just trace it back to the next connection. Uh, so the red and green wire, like I said, they're fully separate. You can have two different sets of circuits coming on these and different variables that go on those wires and we'll get into more of that in the future. So there's a lot of things that you can connect to the circuit network with wires. Uh, this is a list of everything that you can connect. We have rail sig uh, chain signals and rail signals. We have train stops, any kind of chest, including uh, passive provider chests, and or pass. Or, I'm sorry, including logistics chests. We have the pump, the tank, lamps, inserters, transport belt, robo ports, and of course power poles. Now, if your if your wire is connected to something and you try and stretch it a real big distance, it won't actually connect because there is a max length on the cable that you can reach. So to connect over really long distances you have to string it along power lines and then you can connect it to what you want to connect it to. So just keep that in mind. And again to remove wires you just trace over an existing wire. So when you connect this wire to different items each item has different properties that you can adjust. Let's start with the chest. The chest gives you this mode of operation and it reads the contents. Right now we have nothing in this chest but if we come over here we can see that we have 32 stone in this chest and 50 stone in this chest. This will give you a signal of the 32 stone. So if I click on the chest, put the wire on it, and then bring it to the power pole, we can now read that we have a signal on the red wire of 32 stone. If I do the same with the one with 50 stone with the green wire, we now see that we have a green signal with 50 stone. And that is on the right side of the screen there. So we have a red signal with 32 stone and a green signal with 50 stone. The way signals work is kind of like variables in programming. The item itself is actually more like the variable name, and then it has a number attached to it. So that's kind of how they work. Now if you have two signals and you combine them, for instance pulling this 50 stone to this 32 stone, it'll add them together and we now get 82 stone. It doesn't subtract them, it doesn't replace them, it'll always add them unless you're using an arithmetic combinator, and we'll get more into that in the future. So let's uh, go through all of the stuff that we can adjust with this circuit network. Let's start on the right here and uh, start with the signals. So signals allow you to output based off of the state of the chain signal. Uh, so we have the output signals here as red, yellow, green, and blue, and we can adjust what signal it sends under that condition. The different signals that you choose can range from all the items in the game to the fluids in the game, to signals such as 0 through 9, A through Z, all these different colors, a check mark, an info signal, and a dot signal. All of these again are just basically variable names. There are some more advanced ones that we'll get into next episode, but we're not going to be covering those today. So if we wanted to output a red signal when the signal's red, we can do that here. And we can go ahead and attach, say, a green wire to this pole, and we see that it is currently outputting a signal of green. That's because the signal's green. Chain signals work the same way, except that they now have another operation where you can close the signal. So to close the signal, you can just take a closed condition, and the way that the conditions work, many items use these conditions, is 
they will take one signal and compare it with these comparators, either a greater than, a less than, an equal than, a greater than or equal to, a less than or equal to, or a not equal to, that's what this one is, and compare it to either a constant number or another signal. So basically, if you were to compare red is greater than big power pull, and big power pull has five on the signal, then red would have to be greater than five for this light to turn red. For now, we're going to just set it to a constant of zero. So if red is greater than zero, we will turn this red. Now this is a constant combinator, and it's the only combinator we're going to be covering today because it's fairly simple. What this allows you to do is output a constant signal of anything that you choose. If we attach this red wire to this power pole, we can now see that it is producing a constant signal of one red and one yellow belt. And you do have to check it on for that to work. So if we now tie this constant combinator to this signal, it will turn red because red is greater than zero. So once the signal turns red, it also turns the chain signal red, which means that we are now outputting a one red signal on the power pole. We also have some other stuff on there too. Uh, let's go ahead and remove this wire so that we're only seeing that one red. If I were to turn this off, the signals turn green again. I'm sorry. Did you misunderstand me? I said turn green again. Why is it? This gets fairly odd. Uh, let's disconnect to that. Red's not equal to zero. Are you broken? It seems that I broke it. Ah, I'm, I'm sorry. So this was outputting a signal of red, which was keeping that red. So let's keep these separate for the time being. As you can see, uh, this can get fairly complicated fairly quickly on accident if you have the, the wires crossed. So this is now green because it's no longer getting a red signal and it's showing a signal of green here. And if we have this as on, then we're getting a signal of red here. But like I said, if you were to attach this, this is very odd because if I attach it here, it doesn't turn it red because it's outputting a green signal. But the minute I do switch it, it actually locks it. So that might be a, a, a good way to do sort of a memory cell, although there are better ways to do a memory cell. So uh, the train stops, they have different items on the mode of operations that we'll get into now. Uh, so the first one is to enable or disable the train stop. Uh, and that works the same way as the chain signals, it just has an enable condition uh, that when the, the condition is true, it will enable the train stop. Next, we have a send to train. This sends the contents of the circuit network to the train so they can be used as wait conditions. And the way that this works, if we get a train here, when you have a stop on the station, you can choose a circuit condition as your wait time, and then it'll evaluate this circuit condition. But you do have to have that send to train for that to work. Next, we have read train contents. What this will do is read the contents that are in the train that's waiting at the train stop and then output it to the circuit network, which this in com combination with send to train is how that you would control uh, trains very smartly. Uh, next, we have read stop train. It says when a train is stopped at the train stop, a signal is sent with a unique number for that train. So why don't we get a uh, one more rail here? And uh, you know what? Let's put them on this side. Let's go ahead and test this. So if I put these here and I go ahead and throw a train on at the train stop, we can now send a signal of red. And then we, if we tie this green wire here, we should be getting a signal for that train, although we're not. Go ahead and stop it, Mark Strom. Go in automatic. Maybe it's because it has no fuel. Let me grab some fuel. Let me just do that right here. Can you give me some coal? Thank you. Okay, no path. Uh, go ahead and back up. Now go. Do I have this signal? Ah, you know what? I'm sorry. We have this as enable, disable. There we go. So now we're getting a signal of six. And the reason that we're getting six is, who knows? The game basically decides what signal to give it. But it'll be six of anything that we choose. 
So that's the unique signal for this train. I think it's the number of trains that you've actually placed on the map. If we place another one. And go into automatic mode. And go to Mark Stern. We now have a signal of seven. If we place another one. And send it there. We now have a signal of... No path. Okay, throw some coal in you. Go ahead and back up. And go. Now we have a signal of eight. Okay, so it's the amount of trains that you've you've placed down in the world. Uh, it'll give that signal to it. Okay, tangent over. Let's go on. Uh, we already covered the basic chest. That just reads the contents of the chest. Storage chests work the same way. Buffer chests and requester chests are a little bit different. Uh, so the way that these work is any signal that is sent into it, it will request, set the requests on that chest. So if we tie in this constant combinator that has 30 express belt, and we tie in this chest here, we can now see that this chest is now requesting... Um, okay, it's going to make a liar out of me. Oh, here we are. Now this chest is requesting 30 express transport belt, which our bots should deliver if they have it in the system. Next we have pumps. Pumps work almost the same as the signals. They have an enable condition uh, that you can compare two items to the same way. And then the pump will enable if those items are compared. Uh, tanks work the same as chests. They basically just read the contents and output them to the circuit network. Lights are pretty fun. They have an en enable and disable condition, the same as everything else, but they also have this option of use colors. And if you send a signal to it that is a color signal, such as this cyan signal here, and we tie this into the lamp, the lamp will turn cyan. And you can also turn it any color you want, if we want to turn it yellow, or we want to turn it blue, or we want to turn it green. We can turn it any way we want. So next, we have a arm. All of the uh, inserters have the same adjustments on them. We have enable and disable, set stack size, and read hand contents. The enable and disable works the same as all the other items. The set sa stack size works with a control signal. So you set this control signal here, we can say A. And if you send a signal of A to the inserter, Let's say A is 2, and we send this to the inserter, we can limit the stack size of the inserter to 2. If we up that to 3, we can limit the stack size to 3. Then we have read hand contents. What read hand contents does is we'll read whatever the inserter is holding. There's two different modes on this. We have a pulse and a hold. The pulse will send the signal for only one tick when it's picked up, and then the signal will disappear. So if you pick up an item, say copper ore, it will pick up the copper ore for, and send the signal down the wire for one tick, and then it won't read it anymore. On the hold, it'll send the signal continuously as long as the inserter is holding the item. This one is a lot more useful. Next we have transport belt. Transport belt works kind of the same as inserters. You can have two options, the enable or disable, which works the same, or you can read the belt contents, either on a pulse or on a hold. Again, the hold works a little bit better because it sends it continuously as long as the items are on this chunk of belt. But the pulse only sends it for one tick the minute it enters the belt. Uh, next we have the RoboPort. This one's the most complicated so far, but it's still pretty simple. We can read the logistics network contents. If we click on that here and we look at this power pole, it'll show us everything that is currently in the logistics network. If we click read robot statistics, however, you can set what signal all of these statistics go on. We have the available logistics spots, the total logistics spots, the available construction bots, and the total construction bots. If we look at the power now, the power pool now, we have 2.4 on the T, 2.4K on the Z, 1.2K on the Y, and 1.2K on light oil. And that shows us all of these ones here. Cool. That is all of them. So that's pretty much it for the episode, but before we end, I do want to show a couple of small uses for these without any combinator logic at all that can make your base a little bit better. So the first thing that we can do is read the contents of a belt, and you can use this to determine whether the belt is full or empty. So what you can do 
is let's go ahead and enable all the arms here. And if we look at this power pole now, we can see that the signals on the power pole are dipping below 8. That means that this belt is not fully compressed because 8 items can fit on a belt. Next, if we go ahead and set the stack size and override it so that we do fully compress the belt, we look at it and it shows a constant 8. This is a really good way to see if the belt is fully compressed, but there is a better way to do it, and we'll get into that next episode when we cover combinators. The next thing you can do with the circuit network is limit how many items get put in a chest. You can already do this by limiting the chest itself, but say we only wanted to hold five electronic circuits in this chest, how would you do that? Well, you can tie the chest to the inserter, and then you can set this inserter to only enable if green circuits are less than five. So now, if we pull out these electronic circuits, it'll empty out into the chest until there's five, and then it'll stop working. It does overload it a little bit, but that's because the stack size is above one. So it'll make one more operation, which may insert one, one or two extra. The last thing that I want to show you is how to manage your fluids more smartly. Say that you only want to crack light oil into petroleum when you have so much light oil available. So you want to keep a stock of light oil. Well, you can easily handle that with the circuit network. If you tie all of your tanks together on the circuit network and you look at this pump here, you can see that you, you can set an enable condition and you can say only enable if light oil is greater than a number. Let's say 10,000. So now this pump will only pump to the uh, chemical plants that are cracking it into light oil if you have so much light oil in the I'm sorry, I said that backwards. This will only send it to the refineries or the chemical plants that are cracking it down into petroleum if the light oil is above a certain amount. And you can do the same thing with heavy oil. You can only send it if lubricant is a certain amount, which it'll make sure here. If we turn this on and the lubricant drops below 10,000, it will stop pumping the heavy oil and let the lubricant build back up. As soon as the lubricant builds up again, this will start cracking the heavy oil again. You can do the same thing with sulfuric acid. Say that you only want to carry 10,000 sulfuric acid at once. Well, you go off of the machines that are creating the sulfuric acid and you add a pump condition that this only pumps if there's less than 10,000. So if we get less than 10,000 in here, it begins pumping and making more sulfuric acid. If it hits 10,000 again, this pump will stop. And that's pretty much it. That's all that we can cover today with all the basics. I know this episode was long. The next few should be relatively shorter simply because we're going to be covering more topics in a, more episodes. But that's all the basics out of the way. You have to understand all of that before you begin using it. I know it's fairly complicated. Uh, but just remember signals are like variables. As in math, you have like x equals 2. And here we just are looking at colors and, and items instead of x. So we can make x equals 1, x equals 3, whatever we want. So next episode, we're going to be getting into combinators. If you haven't done so yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you haven't seen me yet on Twitch, go ahead and check out my Twitch. The link is in the description as well as in the bottom left-hand corner. Thanks for watching.